Hey guys, it's Chris here. Just wanted to check in with everyone and like do a live face to face kind of alert thing since my emails are getting pretty long and I don't think uh, they're portraying the situation I want to get across. Um, I've been getting a lot of concerned emails from my family lately and I, I appreciate the concern and I'm really thankful for it. But um, Generally speaking, um, what we're seeing here in Japan just isn't lining up with what's happening in the news overseas, and um, we're getting emails about it from our work as well. Uh, I work for JET, and I'm getting emails from my uh, supervisor and my regional uh, head honcho guy, and the general consensus is everyone's getting family emails. Uh, from people that are concerned and it's reasonable and you, there's reason to be concerned there's obviously a lot of stuff happening in Japan right now but um, I think that something that's coming as a result of it is people are getting stressed out about the family stressing out and we are living a normal life going through our normal stuff like I'm going to school I have to get stuff done after school I have my own side obligations and then we have to deal with like like 10 emails a day uh, from really concerned family members saying please evacuate please uh, get home as as soon as you can you will not live if you stay there and um, I just wanted to say a couple of things to help quell some of the concerns so for one uh, people in Shiga the Jets in Shiga not just Japanese people but actual foreigners living here working here people who are aged from 20 to 40 with families, no families, as well as, to the best of my knowledge, everyone in surrounding prefectures, uh, that being uh, Gifu, Kyoto, every place, like places around us, nobody has evacuated. No one has been given allowance to from their organizations, and nobody has actually evacuated yet of their own volition. Everyone's been emailing our supervisors concerned, but nothing's actually happened because honestly, from our perspective, it's like there's nothing going on. I mean, like, uh, kids are going to school, school's still going on, there's no food shortages, there's no um, people rushing for iodine tablets, people aren't going crazy, uh, people aren't keeping their kids home from school or moving further south. Uh, so, as a result, and all the news that we're looking at, because we're looking at a lot, trust me, I'm on Twitter almost every minute of the day, keeping up to date on Fukushima and uh, radiation clouds coming further south. Um, nothing's really happening, honestly. And uh, another thing is the levels of radiation escaping from Fukushima are only high in the area the government has said it is, which means 50 kilometers range. Uh, past that, and trust me, Japan has enough detectors. Um, I can pull a story up for you if you want, but Japan has detectors all over the entire country because there's 84 nuclear power plants here. It's a very small country, not that small, it's the size of California, but nevertheless, it's a small country, so they have tracking mechanisms to make sure that in the event that something did happen with nuclear stuff, radiation leaked, whether it's from Japan or a neighboring Asian country using nuclear power, there's not going to be some giant radiation fallout with nobody knowing about it. Um, so even if you think that the organization running the plants are evil or that the po political climate is bad and they're hiding information and they're not telling full truths, um, honestly with the amount of scrutiny that people are getting that the government's getting here and things like that. I honestly, if they were lying to us, there's enough experts in this country that are expatriates and people that are foreign that people would be contacting news outlets like MAD saying these people are lying to us directly. No one's done that yet. All stories that have alluded to high radiation levels are only saying that they're higher than normal. Not that they're high enough to make you sick, high enough to totally kill someone, not even high enough to really cause any kind of long-term cancer chances. Uh, I posted a chart earlier today 
detailing the uh, amount of exposure relative to things that you get in everyday life. Um, right now, people that are actually in the plant currently being affected by the actual radiation firsthand, those people are getting enough radiation, if I can recall. I think it was to, I think it was equalized to a, like a, a shot of your intestines, like one of those, it wasn't an x-ray, it was one of those like internal scans, it wasn't a C, um, MRI or C-scan, something between there. So these people are, for the two hours they're being exposed, basically getting analyzed at a hospital. So as long as they get themselves out of the situation in the time they need to, and they're cleaned off and they're showered up and they're given add-in tablets, kosher. Everyone else outside that range, even though it's still a radiation, I mean, it's trace. It's very minimal. Um, what else can I say? I think that the foreign media is blowing us out of proportion because honestly, um, they need to make the story appeal to people that are not currently in the country. Uh, I mean, I, if I was in America, I would be wanting to know more. I would be concerned. But if they're just saying, oh yeah, you know, there's some radiation leaking out. Oh well, um, looks like it's a bad situation, but not really affecting anybody. Well, I don't think anyone will look at it. I don't think it would get much attention. I don't think anyone would even be donating to help solve these issues. Um, so while it's a double-edged sword because we're getting attention, therefore getting donations, it's also making people worry way too much. Um, you're going to get a lot of hyperbole. You're going to get a lot of interviews and data and related things like Chernobyl and Three Mile Island that might not actually add up to what people are saying they are. There's no point in believing that stuff if they're going to use hyperbole and they're going to use crazy examples that aren't actually happening. At that point, you're just listening to false news. And honestly, going by the 60 plus people in Shiga, plus everyone surrounding us, I would believe people that are actually living in the environment more so than the news portraying this holocaust of sorts. Um, something similar that happened recently was the whole communist, like, what do you call it, Thailand's little tiff that they had. There was a militant, not militants, there was a protester group that went up against the government and it took out a section of the city. Made it a pretty dangerous place and they did close down uh, a lot of tourism as a result. But I got some stories from my friends saying that they were in the em environment the exact same time. As long as they steered clear of that area, they were fine. And all the news media, the journalists, the, the photog photographers, they were staying in the middle of everything where things are going on fire, things are getting blown up, there's people rushing police squads. That's why the pictures that they got were like what they got. Everyone outside that area, my friends included, were like, wow, the media is really blowing this stuff up. I think it's the same thing with this nuclear issue and this post-earthquake, post-tsunami issue. So I know that you guys are concerned. I understand why. And you're right to be. And I want to put you at ease. And I also want to say, please try and spread a more normalized, uh, neutral, not cataclysmic, oh my god, apocalypse now kind of thing. And uh, evacuation is not necessary. Um, worry is not necessary. Uh, the situation is improving day by day, uh, even if it's not fixed yet. And the moment that we here in Japan actually start getting news and readings and other things that are cause for alarm, you can be assured we'll be the first to know because there's tons of alert systems in place through cell phones, TVs, radios, uh, loudspeakers, and we'll be the first to know because we have Twitter and we have all these other news sources. Uh, since we are semi-bilingual, we can read both local and foreign news. Um, so please, don't worry. Be happy. And 
I'll be in contact, but I wish that you guys would please take this neutralized slash non sensationalist story and spread it with your family. Uh, still, please donate. They know they need donations. They need blankets. They need iodine pills. They need money. They need to rebuild where they were affected up in Miyagi, but 200 miles, 500 kilometers south where I'm at, it's life is normal, man. It's awesome, and uh, feel for them. But I think that our worry and attention should be put towards them, not towards me. So sorry, it's ended up being 11 minutes, but hopefully it's some valuable insights.